Lou, give me a milk. Chocolate. Week 17 is officially here. Nobody really knows which teams will grab those last few spots in the postseason. So we're going to put on our life preservers, put on a little Huey Lewis, get into our DeLoreans, and head into the future. And then we're going to come back. I'm going to tell you how that playoff picture will look on Monday. Each of us is going to pick one team that has not lucked out the spot yet, and we're going to tell you how they end up in the postseason. Schrager, you know all these things. Why don't you go first? My Big man? Back to the Future fan. Yeah. Let's go right into it. It doesn't take Doc Brown to see that the Falcons at 9-6 and six could get the final NFC wildcard spot after Week 17 comes to a close. All they got to do is this. Win. Win, win, win. If they win at home and they can beat the Panthers on Sunday or... The Seahawks somehow lose to the Cardinals up in Seattle. The Falcons clinch a playoff berth. That is all they need. Okay. One win okay. or a loss and a Seattle loss. And if the Falcons do clinch that playoff berth in the playoffs, possibly going and maybe making a little move here, going to their second straight NFC title. Mm. Matt Ryan is going to check that family photo. He okay. took with all the other starting quarterbacks in the NFC. And look at them right now. Perhaps after the enchantment under the sea dance. <laughs> and he's going to notice that someone is missing. Someone's vanished. No, nope. oh. it should have been Russell Wilson, man. <laughs> Matt Ryan, bye-bye. Like George McFly. Incredible. Enchantment <laughs> under the NFC. That's right. Nicely done. Okay. Nicely All right. done. What do you got, Nate? All right, I think the Bills. The Bills could use that extra plutonium they need from the Libyans and travel <laughs> right Libyans into Libyans on the, show. the playoffs. The Bills need a little bolt of lightning to make it happen. But if they can get a win against the Dolphins in Miami okay. and the Titans lose to the Jaguars and the Chargers lose to the Raiders, great Scott, the Buffalo Bills will make the playoffs for the first time since 1999. Wow. And that would mean that Tyrod Taylor, who was benched in week 11, as we all know, against the Chargers, Talk about it. will make the postseason while Phillip Rivers and the Bolts and Marcus Mariota and the Titans will get erased. Mm. Like the McFly family, their arm disappears, their head disappears. The little arm and the... There we go. Uh -oh. Here it comes. Here it comes. Come on now. Oh, there it goes. They got a kiss at the dance. Come on. Oh, man. All right. Adams, good third luck, time. babe. Third time's the charm. Good luck. Peter wants to disappear. <laughs> Let's go back to the NFC for yeah. a minute, shall we? Although the weight of the world is on Russell Wilson, and it is heavier than the Earth's gravitational pull... How cool would it be if the Seahawks grab that final wild card spot? How do they get there, you ask? Yeah. Ask. Okay, how do they get there? All right, the Seahawks need a win in their final game, Week 17. At home, they get a home game against the Cardinals. Yes, it's Larry Legend. And they need the Falcons to lose and lose to Cam Newton mm -hmm. and the Panthers. But that's it. A Seahawks win. Okay. And a Falcons loss. All and right. the Seattle Seahawks are your NFC wild card. But you know what that means for... Nothing Matt good. Ryan, Matt Ryan and the Falcons. <laughs> what does it mean, though? They fade away like Crispin Glover. Oh, oh, oh. See you later. Oh. It worked. Great Scott. <laughs> yes. It's incredible. It finally works. I made something that works. Dr. Emmett Brown, he says it. All right. I'm going to push our luck here. For my potential play, slackers, slackers, I'm going to choose an unlikely success story. Kind of like Chuck Berry getting that call from his cousin Marvin and finally hearing that, that new sound he was looking for. Listen to this. Holds out the pump. Mario McFly could do it all. Incredible guitars. That's right. Incredible. The O and 4 Los Angeles Chargers found that new sound and could be a wild card team after this weekend. So how does Lip Rivers get back to the postseason? Well, first, the Chargers need to get a win against the Raiders at the Stub Hub, and the Ravens need to get a win versus the Bengals, mm. and the Jaguars need to beat the Titans. If all that happens, the Chargers are in the playoffs. It is their density. I mean, their destiny. <laughs> get your damn hands off. But if Philip Rivers and the Chargers, I think you got the wrong car, McFly. Ten, it will knock your head off. The Chargers are in. That means, though, it's always the bad news. At the end, Tyrod Taylor, no. Marcus Mariota, make like a tree and get out of here. They they gone. Like they Marty gone. McFly's sister. They That's gone. how it goes. That was unbelievable. Good. Nate, you look charmed over there. I like charmed because the thing about Schrager. Okay. <laughs> so, I, I love you because you're looking at the graphic. You're like, hello, McFly. <laughs> Anybody home? Hello, McFly. You know how there's the theater mask where one's smiling and one's frowning? That's what I'm looking at with you two right well, now. I'm smiling? It, yeah, it's it's authentic too. <laughs> <laughs> Can I interest you in the mad minute? Love a mad minute. All right, we I love, love a mad minute. Perfect. We're, We're going to go back to the future. Breakdown. A lot of things have to happen.
happen for certain teams to get in or improve their seating. So we want to preview some of the great matchups with playoff implications in another round of Mad Minute. Okay. Are we doing that right Let's now? Do Let's, Let's, do right. Let's do it. Let's do it. 49ers at Rams. Mad Minuto. So here's the deal, guys. The Rams have clinched the NFC West title game. They're hosting a game in the wild card round. And a win on Sunday gives them the three seed. But L.A., Mr. McVay came out and said, I'm going to sit Jared Goff and Todd Gurley and Aaron Donald, my starters. But this is my favorite game this week because it is Goff and McVay and Shanahan and Garoppolo. And it's an amazing yeah. matchup between two of the better young teams in the league. I can't believe I'm saying that about the 49ers after the first 11 weeks of their season when they were 1-10. But if I'm a 49ers fan, I'm coming out there and I'm saying, I don't care who's on the other side of the field. We are invincible right now. They cannot lose. And I would be very surprised if the 49ers do not pull this one out. They're favored in this game. They are the team that everyone is hot on. And just if you thought we were hot on the Bucks in the summertime, just wait till oh. the media starts talking about yeah. the 49ers imagine? this offseason. Uh, that's a good point. They've already won the Super Bowl next year. I'm going to just crazy. I'll, I'll see you in two years. I love it, though. I'm in. They're returning to greatness, Trey. Me too. What do you got, Burleson? Yeah, you, you were talking earlier about the Steelers were playing with their backups and how they came in and played at such a high level late in the season. I feel like it's going to be the Rams. They understand where they're at. They don't want to get punched in the gut and have to limp their way into the postseason, even if it is their backups. They're going to try to show out and show up. You've got five seconds, McFly. I'm going to go overtime here, guys, because I wish we were getting Reuben Foster versus Todd Gurley. I think we're going to be getting it a lot. The guy I called Captain Splatter to begin the season. Did you see his act on Twitter recently? Roll Reuben Foster's tweets. I want to you these. He's playing really well lately. PFF has the fifth greatest rookie. Defensive rookie of the year. Need that. Want that now. Give it to me. He wants. Give me the next tweet. Look at this. Woo man, you lucky a dude didn't have a full season defensive rookie of the year. Promise you that. That is what I love about Ruben Foster. Huge personality, huge hitter. And by the way, he's been playing really well, just a little banged up. More things to come from him versus Gurley in that NFC West. Love that. Now let's move on to the Cardinals visiting the Seahawks in Seattle. The Seahawks need to win against the Cardinals and a Falcon loss or tie against the Panthers on Sunday. If both of those things happen, the Seahawks do find themselves in the playoff picture. 60 seconds on the clock. You're a former Seahawk. What are you looking for? Russell Wilson. Russell Hart. Russell, Russell Hard. I'm looking for Russell Wilson to put the team on his well, I love a good spoiler role, and I love Bruce Arians wearing the black hat in this one. And, you know, everyone knows the Seahawks need to win this game to have a shot, but this might be Bruce Arians' last game. We're not sure. I want to see what Bruce can do in B.A. And, you know, I don't care who's that quarterback. I know Larry Fitzgerald's that wide receiver, and I know they're going to be competitive in this one. It's funny. He should actually wear a black Kangol hat in this game because, look, the fact is he's probably done walking away. I don't know if we'll see him again. This is one of his best coaching efforts this year. They lose David Johnson. He's had most of the season with Blaine Gabbard and Drew Stanton. And if they win this game, they're still a 500 team. I'd love to see Bruce Arians go on it. Sorry to the Seahawks, but I'd root for that, too. Good Sweet. point. The Seahawks have made the playoffs for five straight years. Been, I mean, that's the second longest playoff streak Amazing. in the league. All right, Jags at Titans. The Titans can clinch a playoff berth with a win against the Jags team, a Jags team that is locked right now. They can't move. They are in that three seed in the AFC playoff picture. The Titans, though, they can still get in with a loss if the Bills and the Chargers mm. both also lose, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Take it away. But if you're the Titans, just go out and win. Mm -hmm. I went through the list earlier in the show. The 93 Dolphins, the 94 Eagles, the 96 Chiefs, the 2008 Buccaneers, Burleson's 03 Vikings. There oh. is a long, long history of teams that have epic collapses and miss the playoffs. Don't join the list. You're forgotten forever, and you don't want to be on that thing. Titans, if you're anything, go win against a, ja a, a Jaguars team that's playing yeah. for nothing. This is bigger than a loss. I mean, seriously, this would be like a life tattoo. Those guys will never live that down. It'll be part of every single top 10 special for years to come. Don't let that happen. You have great players. You drafted a Heisman winning running back to win this game. Feed him and win the game so we don't have you in those specials. Yeah, and speaking of collapses, you look at last week for Blake Bortles. He threw those three picks. You're thinking to yourself, is this the Blake that we've been waiting on all mm. season? Season. Got to figure out a way to kind of recapture that magic because over the month of December, it seemed like Blake Bortles was playing like the best quarterback in football. Let's go into the postseason strong. Jaguars, you guys got a chance in this, man. You guys could actually go out there and do some damage in the postseason. All right, that's it for Mad Minute for now. Uh, we have other stuff to get to, so let's get to it. I don't know, hashtag GMFB. Let's see got what some is shaking here. We Fly have an argument. Here. Would you rather have Dan Marino's career or Eli Manning? So it's yard stats versus rings, right? Or this factor. Everyone loves the Ace Ventura, but they're easy. One was an Ace Ventura. One was Ace Venture. I think Ace Venture. Oh, after the he, venture after he kissed Ray Finkel. Yes. Right? Got any more of that gum? Yes, he wants the, the red cinnamon gum at the end of it. Dan Marino, a lot of lines in there. Yeah, the good line. What yeah. else yeah. you got? What about when he <laughs> lays over the at the end? He's What's like, the goal of every player each season? Surely it's to win a Super Bowl. Eli has two. Any player with any pride in them 
would want those two titles. Dan Marino's an eight-time All-Pro and considered the greatest passer of all time. I, right. That's a nice title, too. It's the shame because I think more often than anything with Marino, it comes up as the go-to example of the guy who didn't win at all, almost as a punchline. Dan Marino beat the 85 Bears. He beat the 85 Bears. No one beat the 85 Bears. Right. But I think it's Eli. The rest of Dan Marino's life, he always has to hear that. It's the original fake, fake, fake snap. Right and now everybody does it. But I hear what you're saying on that, Kyle, but if you're known as one of the best ever, you would, I think some guys would take that. Some guys would say, I'd rather go down as one of the greatest to ever play the game at that position than to have some jewelry in my jewelry box. Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of players that have Super Bowls, and I'm not knocking it because I'm not that guy, and I envy those guys. I'm jealous of those guys. But... I would, I would rather, if I could go back, I would rather go down as one of the greatest ever than walk away to Super Bowl. You'd rather have Marino's career than Eli's two rings. That's yeah, because that, that lasts a little bit longer. Now, I'm a guy that didn't win a Super Bowl, so objectively, you know, when I played, I, I wanted to get that ring. That, that was more important than anything. But now looking back on my career, I wish I would have gave more effort into being a selfish player. And that would have been, I would have absorbed all the praise and go down as one of the greatest. I was such a team player, I didn't care about myself. Mm -hmm. I just wanted the ring. But now that I'm removed, I don't blame guys like Odell for wanting to be great. I don't blame, you know, the guys that go out there and talk up a game and then back it up because they realize, like, your legacy is only going to last as long as your name does in people's mouths. Your legacy is two rings. Whenever you think about the Giants, you think Eli, two rings. Like, that's, yeah. that's always going to be attached to that. And You're playing the game to get the rings. It's yeah. the old classic sure. thing. Would you rather have Carl Malone's career or Horace Grant's career? Would you right? rather have uh, Andre Reid or Deion Branch? Who would you rather have, Nate? Right. That's, that's, a, that's a great conversation to have. And some of these guys that are, are, don't have rings are Hall of Famers. Social. For real, Marino's impact on the game is more memorable and influential. I'd rather be Barkley or Stockton. Mm. And Sam Cassell. I love a Stockton. Yeah. Who's Hesse pull up Jimbo? He's verified. Did you watch the show? <laughs> I, I, love I don't him. know who that is. Thank him. you for watching the show, though. That's a Hesse. That's Hesse pull up. Oh, okay. I don't know. Oh, Basketball. hesitation. Yeah, Hesse yeah, pull Marino okay. says Jesse having that bling would be great, but people became football fans because of Marino. The legacy of American football was impacted by number 13. Eli is great, no doubt, but remember, heroes get remembered, Sandlot. but legends Sandlot. never mm. die. It's facts. I think Eli became... is a hero. Who is more loved in New York City than Eli Manning? Even after all this, he gets benched and the world falls. Are you guys kidding me? But Tim and Jeter. Jeter, who also has the Who is more loved than Eli? Is, is Dan Marino more loved okay. than Eli Manning? No. Okay. I don't okay. think so. I don't think so. What are we talking about? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, no, you said no. Eli's more loved in New York City. On a national scale, when you're talking about quarterbacks, I don't think somebody in California is going to say, I love Eli. I guarantee a dude in California would be like, I think Dan Marino's the, one of the best See, I, ever. I, I think that, that Eli, though, I mean, look. Eli, Eli won two Super Bowls to beat the Patriots. Eli went 2-14 this year. Eli hasn't been to the playoffs since he was 30 years old, or hasn't won a playoff game since he was 30 years old. Dan Marino owns a million records. Winner, a million records. A Hall of Famer, no doubt. And then, you know, the thing with Marino is he didn't go 2-14 ever. You know, right. he never. Mm -hmm. And in his generation. Oh, he's known as the best passer. In his generation, it was Montana, it was Elway, it was Marino. Legend. Win a Super Bowl. Warren Moon. Like, 